Okay, number 31. They're asking you for P over Q. P is 18. Its factors are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. My Q is 2. So you're going to take every P value and divide it by every Q value. And the answer to 31 should be A. All right. This one has two arms up, so I know the leading term is positive. So the answer is not D. I know that it crosses through every one of my zeros, so I don't have any powers on my factors. I know that if my zeros are negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 2, I should have a factor for each. Um, A says that it also passes through 0 because the x is there up front. So A is out. And then if negative 3 is a 0, x plus 3 is a factor. So I'm going to argue that the answer is C. Number 33. If my x-intercepts are 3 and 2, then that means they're coming from the numerator. And so the answer is not A, and it's not C. If the y-intercept is 6, then um, that's the result of having x equal to 0. So that's still either B or D. The vertical asymptote is 1, so that could still be either B or D. If the horizontal asymptote is 1, that means I have the same degree on top as I do on the bottom. So if I multiply them out, I'll see that I have that relationship on D. And if I put my leading coefficients in front and divide them, 1 over 1 is 1. 34, domain and range. So my x's seem to approach 1 on the left and the right. So the answer there is not A and it's not C. It's either B or D. The range, they approach 2 from both sides. So I'm going to go with answer B. Vertical asymptotes come from the denominator. So if you set your denominator equal to 0, you'll have D. Horizontal, when the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, it's automatically 0. When they're the same, I circle them, and it's 5 ninths. 38, for oblique, I'm going to do synthetic division. And I can stop there. I'm not interested in the remainder, so the answer is D. Thirty-nine. Y varies directly, so K X squared inversely is M. Plug in what you know. Um, y is nine. X is three. M is five. K is 5. Go back and plug in the 4 and the 10. And your new Y is 8. Number 40. This function is not 1 to 1 because it fails the horizontal line test. Number 41, this is 1 to 1. It does have an inverse. You guys graph these in, less, in chapter 4, um, so that should not be an issue. Um, it has an inverse. Find it. So if this is y, I'm going to swap x and y. I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 6. I'm going to divide by x. 
I'm going to add 6 over. That answer looks different than theirs, but if you get a common denominator of x, which answer is it going to be? It's going to be C. Number 42. Get the same base. Drop your bases. Solve your equation for x. On 42, the answer is going to be D. Going to compound the interest quarterly. So find the future value, so that's your A. Your present value is 4107. So it's 1 plus R over N quarterly and then to the NT, so 4 times 5. Number 43, the answer is C. If I'm estimating the number of cases in the year 2000, that means my T is 40. So I'm simply going to plug 40 in for T and um, go for that. So that's not that big of a deal. The answer is C. 45, x to the third equals 8, so the answer is 2. Forty-six. I'm looking for one, first of all, that has I'm subtracting the log on the end and the only ones that have that are A and D and then which one properly is, uh, splits up the product into addition that would be A. 47 is for change of base. Remember base in the basement. And that's the setup on 47. The answer is B. 48. Take it apart first. Move your exponents to the front. Plug in u for the ln of a and uh, v for the ln of b. And 48 should be d. 49. I can put the 3 back up there. I cube both of them. And so the answer is b. Number 50. When I subtract two logs, I can write it as the division of the arguments. I only write the log one time. 12x divided by 3x is 4. So the answer is B. And I'll do the last 10 in another video.